we are going to share the word of God. And I title it Justice in the Church. Justice in the church. Let us pray. Father, we are praying to teach us justice in the church. Lead the church by a way of justice because your church is the pillar and the ground of truth. That the church might walk in truth and holiness. You have light and in you there is no darkness at all. May we shine in the light of God. In Jesus name we pray. In the book of John, First John, chapter one, verse, verse five and verse six. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. The God we serve is light. There's no darkness in God. Light means righteousness, correctness, truth. That's the nature of our God. There's no error, no darkness. In God. Light means plain. God is plain. That is, there's no ambiguity. There's no suspicion. There's no cunningness, which is fleshly wisdom in God. In Deuteronomy, Chapter 32, verse 1. Deuteronomy. Chapter 32. I read from verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. As the small rain upon the tender herb and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord ascribe ye greatness unto him. Describing him in verse 4, he is the rock. His walk is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Don't use your arrow to justify God. Don't use your sin to support God. Don't use your cunning wisdom to defend God. 
Don't use your brain. Insufficient brain to help God. He is perfect. Follow him. Don't think there is risk in the righteousness of God. There is no risk. Don't think there will be shame for those that follow God's righteousness. No. There is no shame. Serve God uprightly. Perfectly. Don't play game. Foolishness. Hide, hide, do, hide out. In matters of God. If it is wrong. Let it be wrong. That is how it should be. By the way. It's not God that is wrong. It is man that is wrong. So let the man. Accept his wrong. And not. Use the name of the Lord. No. The church is the church of God. In 1 Timothy. First Timothy. We read. First Timothy chapter 3. From verse 15. Bible says fifteen and sixteen. The scripture has this to say. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. Describing the house of God, he said, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The true church of the living God is a place of truth. Is the pillar, is the ground for truth, place for truth, pillar of truth. That's the church of Christ. So nothing should be done forwardly in the church of Christ. Nothing should be done to defend the local church, the physical church. No. Make it plain. Don't defend an individual. Don't defend the pastor in sin. No. Then he has erred from the truth. The church is a place of truth. If you are wrong, don't deny it. You are in the church, a place of truth. If anyone says, I know him, but walk in darkness, is a liar. The truth is not in him. If you are in the church, and you're acting in darkness. You relate in darkness. There's a secret thing you are doing. Then you are not a true person. You are a liar. You don't know God. Otherwise, the church is the pillar of truth. I do not send you to defend me, the international director and leader of holiness movement. No, I send you to, to go and reveal the truth. Go and show the truth. If it is revealed that I do wrong, I'll start, let the truth reveal it. Stand by the sight of the truth. Otherwise, you will be bringing darkness to the church. The pillar and ground of truth. Speak the truth. Don't defend somebody in a lie. It is darkness. It is darkness. And God would not wonder. You are corrupting his church. 
Yes. Your Bible is not open before you. Is it open before you? It's not. Ah. Okay. That is what we are saying. The church is the pillar <coughs> and ground of the truth. Yes. There, were, there was an issue that arose against one of our pastors. Who is here? Pastor Donatus. And he came up to say no. What was labeled against him was not true. So, we wouldn't want to take judgment outside truth there are matters we will not bother despite the defense we may not bother but there are other matters we may bother yes why are we to bother is because he has said of the brethren there was biasness. He has said of those who wrote against him, they were unfair. As a result, we must give him a second hearing. He is our brother. Since the church as the Lord told Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you open shall be open. Whatever you shut shall be shut. If we have the key of eternal life for people, we must be very careful whom we shut the door against. Because of the eternal life of that person. He says, Saul, whose value is more than the whole world. So, we have to examine the matter again and bring it to light. Again, if we play over it, Donatus is a soul, an individual. When Satan left heaven, he didn't live alone. He politicized other people. Well, that one we will not talk about it because God is not to blame. It was a perfect environment. And perfect wisdom was involved to allow it until they were sent out from heaven. But on earth, where there can be error in man, we can't say that we don't bother because he might cry out to other people. See the treachery the church has done to me. He's not the only servant in the church. There are many others. He might cry to them. See and see and see. What the church has done. I am disciplined for no just cause. And it might affect others. And weaken the people. And bring harm to the system. The church of God. People will now be filled with a sense of injustice. In the church of God. Which is supposed to be. The pillar. And ground. Of the truth. Re-examining. Our brother's case. To know what actually it is. Is vital. It serves us. In the mouth of two or three witnesses. Two witnesses have been given. The third witness. Is where we are in now. Because. It was necessary. 
Otherwise, usually, in two witnesses, the matter should have been over. But where two witnesses cannot handle a matter, it's still not clear there should be a third witness. That is why we are having a third session. And this third session is superintended, superintended by the international director himself, Pastor Paul Rica. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I read verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother. And that before the un unbelievers. The Lord says, a child of God among us with the spirit of God in him is wiser, greater, than a judge in the unbelieving world because of the presence of the spirit of God in him can you not judge one another can you not trust one another that you are now taking matters to unbelievers no you don't do well you're shaming the church so by this the Lord has given us confidence that when we come together as we are now, even having the general leader, the international director, as the judge, we should expect truth, plainness, righteousness in such matters. In Deuteronomy, Chapter 17, Deuteronomy, Chapter 17, the Bible says from verse 8, If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests and the Levites, and unto the judge that shall be in those days, and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do according to the sentence which day of that place which the Lord shall choose shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they shall inform thee. Here is the Supreme Court. If there have been cases among you in your states and nations, in your chapters and units, there have been problems among you that you could not solve. Judges of 10, judges of 20s, of 50s, of hundreds, of thousands could not handle, take it to the headquarters where the leaders are and where 
the overall leader, the judge, is the high priest, is. And they shall show thee, after having heard, they shall show thee what the judgment looks, what the judgment should be. And he said, when they have shown you, don't argue again. Don't fight again. Neither you who did the judgment should think you'll be justified. No, you who are judged again should think you may, you may be vindicated. It is as they hear you. So one thing in the judgment is hearing. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, there must be hearing. Here. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I read verse 17. Oh, let me let us start, start from verse 15. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Hear the causes. The, the courts of judgment in the world can spend 10 years judging a matter. Because of hearing the causes. Hearing the matter. Hearing the witnesses. They can spend such long time. In the judgment. So we are not to be in haste. Hear the causes. Between the people. And judge with righteous judgment. Not political judgment. That awards. Success in the judgment to people that are already in their favor. That condemn people because they hate them. Or give success, victory in the judgment to people who can pay. Or pay more than the other. We are not in the world. We are in Christ. And it is said, judge righteous judgment. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as, as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. For the judgment is God's. God is the one that occasioned the judgment because he wants justice. He wants truth. So, don't do a thing of your interest. God will know. Don't speak lies in judgment. It's terrible to cover the truth. It's just you're in darkness. Don't show favor and so coin it in a way. Don't. To do so, you are in darkness. The truth is not in you. For God is light. The Bible tells us mercy and truth have met together. For God to show mercy, there must be truth. If you cover the truth, then there can be no mercy. Whatever mercy is generated will be temporal. Because the truth, which is the twin brother, is not made 
to follow. A man alone cannot give birth to a child. A woman alone cannot give birth to a child. It takes a man and a woman to give birth to another person, a child. So, mercy is standing alone. It's not blessing people. Truth is standing alone. It's not blessing people. It is when truth comes that may and mercy meet together with it that they produce justice, blessing, freedom, real salvation. So, if you cover the truth, the individual will not get salvation. We are not in the court of law. We are before God. If you say the truth, the truth may be very bad. In fact, the truth may require greater damage on that person. The truth might require even the date of that person. As communication from the church, but that is the best for your life and for the life of that person and for the life of the church. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, the Bible says, yes, verse 6, Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6, if thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which thou shalt not know, which thou hast not known, thou know thy fathers, namely, of the gods of the people, which are around about you, near unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, number one, nor hearken unto him, number two. Neither shalt thou pity him, number three. Neither shalt thou spare him, number four. Neither shalt thou conceal him, number five. Your brother, or the wife of your bosom, you have seen her in a sin. You have seen him, your brother, in a sin. Your husband, you have seen him in a sin. Treacherous sin. Damnable sin. Disqualifying sin. Don't hide him. Don't hide her. Don't say, if I report my wife, my work will stop. Who told you? Does not God reward justice? Does not God reward truth? Don't say so. Don't say, if I report my wife or report my husband, he may, leave, he may not marry me. He will drive me out of the house. Then, will you submit to mortal man than to the living God? Will you please man than God. How much you who say, I pity him. I don't want the church to do evil against him. To discipline him. To drive him away. To deny him salary. Pity? The Lord said, don't pity him. <laughs> Jesus said, please, don't pity man. Pity me. Who left my throne came down to the earth and went to the cross for man. Pity me. Should I do all this and go empty handed? Should I go do all these things and man dooms the others? And you say you, you oh no, you don't want. Many of you will never make heaven. Because you hide iniquity. Hi exposing sin means Preaching against sin. Hiding sin is shutting your mouth over sin. And the blood of that person is in your hand. Then which heaven are you going? You sow sin. And the Lord says, 
cry aloud and spare not. And show my people their sins. The house of Israel, their transgression. Micah said, truly I'm full of power of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit to declare unto Jacob their sin. But you, you hide it because you are pity. Pity you, man. You won't make heaven. You are not with Jesus. He that gathered not with me, scatter it. I come to save sinners, but you are hiding sinners. How are you walking with Jesus? I told my own. I, I leave him alone. Let uh, another person. That's what Moses said. God, send another person. God said, I came to you. Why are you asking me to go to another person? I opened this matter up to you. And you are telling me, go, go and open to another person. Are you not stubborn? Then what did I create you for? I can't use you the way I desire. I cannot use you the way I desire. How then do I reward you? Of what benefit? A salt has lost its saltiness and is dense for good for nothing than to be trodden under foot by men. Otherwise, what's your value? You're not gathering with me. You're not saving souls with me. Is it not when sickness is discovered that it can be treated? But you refuse. The man, the man is, is brought to your own laboratory to test and show what sickness. So that the sickness can be treated. It's, ah, the way I look at it, I don't want to reveal the sickness that is in this man. He can't stand the revelation. He can't stand what, the, stand what the machine will say. Because this man, as I'm seeing him now, I don't think he will last for three months. So you don't also want him to leave? You don't want to bring out the sickness? So the man can be treated. You don't want to bring out the sin. So the man can be shown mercy. You cover the truth. Mercy is denied that man. Mercy will be denied to you. As you do it for the other. It shall be done for you. Do to others what you expect them to do unto you. That's the golden rule. If man cannot satisfy that God will satisfy it. The golden rule. If he does not do it on earth, he will do it when you leave the earth. The golden rule. Because you are not with him. So, the judgment is of God. Judge with righteous judgment. I was preaching a message on marriage. As I was preaching, somebody came at, the, somebody came at it and, and hurt me. At that time, I was speaking to women. Submit to your husband. Obey your husband. Look up to your husband. He is the savior of the body. As the church is subject unto Christ. So be subject to your husband. The man stop and say, see, unbalanced message. Uh -uh. Why not take more to listen? <laughs> Why not take more time to listen? You're just interested in fault. Have, have you taken what I will say as the message proceeds? Do you even know when I was running a series and had talked to the husbands? Now it is the wife's turn. But what is unscriptural? They cannot find unscriptural thing. It's some balance. Because see, he's talking to wife. He didn't talk to us. <laughs> he didn't talk to husband. Can you imagine that? So you hear something. You didn't hear it well. You didn't examine it. You didn't hear the other side of it. You condemn. God doesn't want that. That's what they did against him when he became man. Yes, murmurers, backbiters, gossipers. Just, oh, he did it to you. Is he doing it to everybody? What is the circumstance that made him to do it to you? Did you take your time to judge? Did you study yourself? Did you look well over yourself to know whether it is this man's character or it is just one case in you and that's all. So it tells you 
you must be careful. Be very careful. Yes. So that you don't carry yourself into damnation. You don't carry yourself into That's what I want to let you know. Yes. In Acts of, of Apostles chapter 25, as I warned the people who criticize, find fault, that you have not heard that thing well. You just saw one thing and you condemn for that one thing. Does your Lord judge a man? Before they hear him, before it hear it him, you have not heard him. So also, also to, to the judges, the Bible says, when you hear a thing about a person, from one person, don't be fast to conclude. See another principle of justice. Another principle of justice. Verse 20, I mean chapter 25 of Acts of Apostles, from verse 18. And after certain days, King Agrippa and Benice came unto Caesarea. And when they had been there many days, Festus declared Paul's case, or Paul's cause, unto the king, saying, There is a certain man left in bonds by Felix. About whom, when I was at Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me, desiring to have judgment against him. To whom I answered, it is not the manner of the Romans to deliver any man to die. Before that, he which is accused, have the accusers face to face and have license to answer for himself concerning the crime laid against him. You can find the reason why some of you are here. To be able to speak face to face. Because listening to you alone, you give some serious judgment. But is it like that? Okay. If what you say is true, here is the person. Don't change your mouth. Say the thing you said outside him. It means you are a sincere person. You are a true person. But if you cannot say the same thing, then you are a monster. You are from the other side. You are evil. You are a tailbearer. You are a backbiter. You are an evil man. Because you condemn this person. Not because you loved him and want him to be corrected. But you want evil to be done to him. That's why you condemned him in his absence. And when he came, you lacked the power. So judges should bring people face to face. Here is our If truly he has done evil, to who? In which way? Let the individual who testified of Donatus, testify to him. If he has any real defense, let us hear. So that it's not just that we compiled evil from this person, evil from this person, and throw it at him. No. We will not be doing justice. Amen? So, it is an open place. God desires. And of course, God gives the righteous this grace in Proverbs. Chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 1. The Bible tells us My son, if thou would receive my words and 
hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah. If thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, for the Lord giveth wisdom of wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom. For the righteous, he is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his sins. Verse 9. Everybody, one, two, go. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yeah, every good path. Therefore, you pray for yourself. Lord, I am under divine kingdom. May I not fault be faulted. May I not do evil. May I never tell lies. May I not defend the guilty. Not justify the guilty. May I stand truly, truly, righteously to defend the innocent by that which I know and not beyond it. Everybody must go before the Lord in prayer because uh, for the next two days we shall be in judgment to know what is the truth about our brother. What is the truth about his case? We will want to know. Rise up upon your feet and go before the Almighty God for yourself that you will be right. You will be righteous. You will find grace. You will find understanding. Wisdom will be given to you in Jesus' name.